All right, so I'm with Jarrell Big Baby Miller. How you doing, Jarrell? What's up, what's up? Not much, man. Uh, you did some good sparring with uh, Quadrant Hill. How was that? How'd that go? It was cool, man. It was fun. You know what I mean? We've been doing a lot of weight since my last fight on August 19th. And now we in November now, so now we're definitely trying to cut the weights out and get back in the boxing routine. So today was a good day with an awkward guy to see what I need to work on. And uh, had some fun in Florida, man. My first day sparring, so uh, definitely won't be my last. Yeah, what you, what, 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 you wearing, what are you wearing right now? I'm about 305. Okay. You know what I mean? But a lot of people don't believe me. They say you move too well and you just hold it very well. You're very solid. So I think that's a compliment. But now we got to get ready for, you know, we, we six in the IBF, I found out today. And I think five in the WBO and like seven in the WBA and the WBC, I guess. I don't know what the hell they think. And I'm yeah. 15. But, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of big things coming up. So it's time to really get into top shape, you know, cut down from uh, weightlifting. Yeah, man, the boxing rankings, you know, they, they be crazy sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, like, what's, uh, what's next for you, like, as far as fights go? Um, right now, I'm going through some um, promotional things right now. So we're trying to work a, a deal out and figure out what's the next step for Big Maybe Team and uh, Militon Productions, you know, we just formed that. Uh, so uh, we got a lot of big things coming, man. The main thing right now, I'm just trying to get my in-house stuff in order first. And then, um, yo, we're going to make an announcement. Less than a month, we hear some big things from Big Baby and uh, Team Miller. Okay. A lot of people always talk about, you know, the weight. That's always a big concern. Yeah. What's, what's your, like, your ideal weight as, as a fighter? I think right now we're looking about 275, 270. I think I'll be strong, powerful. My, my footwork, everything will be there. And I definitely can keep my strength. I've been there before. But since I know I have some time right now, I'm willing to put on a little, more, a little more mass. And I sure as hell did that. So now it's time to cut down and just get to the ideal where I want to be, you know. Okay, and I'm looking forward to seeing when you finally get to that oh, point. Oh yeah, most definitely, man. It's gonna be phenomenal, man. People don't believe the way that I, the way that I am right now. But of course, you feel it. You can see the difference. I mean, every, every 10 pounds, you're gonna see a difference. So, you know, I, we just started. Uh, we gonna we started dieting down here, and I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see results. Yeah, man. Your divisions are really interesting right now. Uh, you had the whole Klitschko Joshua thing mm -hmm. fall through. Uh, what's your overall take on that? I mean, the heavyweight division is like, uh, it, it's, it's, it's chess, but. It's people that don't want to sacrifice pawns either, you know what I mean? Eddie Hearn working with Ortiz, you know, because he's trying to keep Ortiz away from Anthony Joshua. That's how I feel. And uh, it's, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of things going on. Uh, you know, Vladimir Kishko don't want to fight, so he's faking injury so he can fight Joshua for the big money later on. It's a lot of politics, but I peep game, you know, it is what it is. And like I said before, nobody calling my name, and it is what it is. But I get it. It's a high risk, low reward fight right now at this point. But that's why I got to figure out my, my, my step for me. I'm not worried about anybody. I'm not, I'm not fighting anybody for anybody no more because. Nobody's calling my name, so I gotta really sit down and plan my my route to the championship. Yeah, if uh, if you have it your way, who, well, who would you who would you be in the ring, ring with next? You gotta um, get well, the closest ranking I am right now is WBO, and I've I've heard from WBO they said they want me to mandatory of Joshua Park and Andy Ruiz, the winner of that. Uh, if uh, David Hay doesn't want to fight, and oh. David Hay has said he doesn't want to fight, so I'm waiting to be mandatory for that fight, which will probably be taking place probably in April or some shit. Okay, so Parker or Ruiz, they got they got they got to step to the table. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 the one we're looking at. Close, come the closest rankings. Whatever ranking I'm close to, that's what I want to go first. You know, I'm so WBL look like it's the route we're going I'm heading to right now. All right. Jarrell, when I look at you, I look at, you know, the power, the footwork, the yeah. skills, but not just that, like outside of the ring, your personality. Yeah. Cool. What do you feel you bring to the heavyweight division that these other heavyweights don't have? Man, you know, I got the gift of gab, you know what I mean? I mean, I follow in the greats, and I mean, one of my, one of the great people that I like looking up to from back in the day until now was Shannon Briggs, you know, a Brooklyn guy who's kind of reinvented himself, you know, and tried to like, kind of fell off, came back, fell off, and he's coming back again. So, I mean, when you watch dudes like that that have that self-motivation and desire to be a world champion for the third time, it's motivates you, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I mean, it's a Brooklyn thing, man. You can't go home and take an L. They're going to climb yeah. you all day, you know what I mean? So, well, you right there on the stoop, just yeah, letting you know. Yeah, you got your ass for bro. I'm like, yo, come <laughs> on, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a definitely an ego thing, but it's definitely a Brooklyn thing, and it's definitely a, a heart thing, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't going there without a fight. Yeah. If, if it's 10 of y'all versus me, I'm going to kill six, six of y'all before I go down, you know what I mean? That's right. So, it's a mentality, and a lot of these heavyweights don't have that. They don't have it. You can see in their eyes, you can tell they don't have it. Some of them got belts right now. They don't have it. And I'm telling you, when they get there with a motherfucker, I want to die, breathe, eat, shit this motherfucker. I'd rather, rather go to the hospital and take an L. We're going to see what's really going to happen. You mentioned Shannon Briggs. Yeah. How is like how has he helped how has he helped you so far? Like just being in the gym with him. I mean, we always talk all the time, man. Let's talk about business wise and stuff not to do and this. Just school and school me on the game, you know what I mean? Uh, uh and I was being around him, man, you know, trying to help him get ready for his fight coming up for the world title against Lucas Brown. Now, I like Lucas Brown, he's a good guy, you know, I never had no bad words with him. But you know, uh, you know, Uncle reached out, so you know I'm gonna help him, you know, I mean what it is. And um uh, on the bigger and better things. Yeah. The boxing's heating up right now. Are there any fights you're like excited to see? coming up? 
Um, Shannon versus Lucas Brown, I'm excited to see. Lucas Parker versus Andy Ruiz, I'm excited to see. I don't really care about the Eric Molina and Anthony Joshua fight, per se, too much. But uh, don't sleep on Eric Molina. He can definitely punch. And uh, he's definitely going to go in there and bang. Um, who else? I think, uh, who else? We got DeGale and um, Jack. And Jack, I want to see that one. Um, I'm trying to think who else. You got War Kovalev? War Kovalev, of That's course. That's one. definitely going to be a good one. Who you got on that one? Uh, Andre Ward. Andre Ward? I got Andre Ward on that one. I feel he's more slick. Kovalev needs a, a standing still body to hit. Or right in front of him. If you go box and move your feet, different story. So you feel like Ward's too smart for him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Better footwork. If Ward was going to sit still and only move his torso, I'd give it to Kovalev. Because mm -hmm. he has good footwork. You know what I mean? That's why I think Bernard, I guess that's why Bernard kind of lost that fight. Bernard can, can still move, but his foot wasn't as fast as it used to be. Yeah, that's yeah. why Kovalev kind of touched him because he was moving the torso, but the leg wasn't moving. Yeah, the mind, was, was, the mind was able, but the body mm, wasn't. It was, yeah. But uh, Andre moving everything, so definitely uh, going to be a good fight. Okay. Uh, if there was, if, this is a random question, but if, if there was one heavyweight from any era that you could fight, who, who would it be and why? I think it would have to be the biggest name in boxing. I think it would be Ali, really. Oh, Ali? I think you got to go for the greatest. Fuck it. You know what I mean? I mean, if I had to go in, then, I mean, Ali can box all day, but shit, that'd be a lesson worth having. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'd definitely go in there and bang out with the man. You know what I mean? And, uh, but those are legends, bro. That's the reason why you got to go for a legend. I think it'd be Ali or Tyson, really. Or maybe the first the first black heavyweight ever would been Jack Johnson. You got to do something legendary, man. If you ain't trying to go out there like, be, and be the legend and become a legend, man, you ain't doing shit. You're in the wrong sport. That's it. Yeah, yeah, so. Go for the gusto yeah. or don't go at all. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so we we'll be here. We we'll be here for another whole week, man, and we gonna be here getting work, man. I'll definitely be here to come come see you and all yeah, that. Yeah, no doubt. Yo, you mentioned uh Mike Tyson. I know you're from Brooklyn. It's, how how much of influence did Mike Tyson have on you? I mean a lot. I mean Mike was the reason why I got into boxing. I'm you know, watching the TV, watching dudes going in and demolishing dudes, and I started studying boxing and know that it was a Riddick Bowe, it was a Shannon Briggs, it was freaking um. Those other fights. Lennox uh, Lewis? Lennox, not Lennox Lewis, the heavyweights from Brooklyn. Um, oh, Brooklyn. Oh, uh, you had um, Hasim Rockman? Hasim Rockman from Rockman, from Baltimore. Uh, this is a bunch of dudes, man. I was like, damn, man, Brooklyn has a rich history in this shit. So, I mean, I had this point to work, man, and it showed myself. So, basically, I'm next. I'm next to the next Brooklyn, like, heavyweight. Yeah, I'm next Brooklyn, man. And this is a matter, like I said, it's a matter of time. A matter of freaking time. All right. Any message to the boxing world? Man, just Google me, man. <laughs> I'm coming for your neck. Then I'm taking your girl. Not no one leftovers, but I'm, I'm coming for my belts, though. <laughs> All right, Jarrell Bibi Miller, thank you. <laughs> All right, peace. All right. Yo, can you do me one favor? Yeah. Could you say hi? Uh, this is Jarrell Miller, and you're watching True School Sports. True School Sports? Yeah. All right. Boom, it's your boy, Big Baby Miller, straight out of Brooklyn. You're watching True School Sports. Tune in, motherfucker. All right, thank you. <laughs>